Um, hi everybody, or good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Hannes, and today, as Griselda mentioned, I would like to talk about TFX and Apache Beam. Um, you can, I, I gave the talk the name MLOps with TFX and Apache Beam, but the actual perfect title would have been the dream team between TFX and Apache Beam. And hopefully in the next uh, 20 minutes, it will become clear why that is the perfect dream team. Um, just real brief about myself, I'm a big fan of Apache Beam. I don't consider myself as an expert, but I'm a heavy user of TensorFlow Extended, and therefore um, I love to work with Apache Beam. Um, I'm a um, Google developer expert for machine learning and also the co-author of two machine learning publications, and one of them is the book Griselda just mentioned. Um, so before we deep dive into TensorFlow Extended and uh, Apache Beam, let's briefly talk about MLOps. So in the past, we have focused very strongly on how to train machine learning models. There was a lot of discussion about model architectures. Um, we've introduced convolutional nets, recurrent networks. Now we talk about transformers these days. But to actually get our model into the real world, we have all these subservices or like these supporting um, tools and um, libraries, which we sort of string together. And as you're probably know there was this paper uh, a couple years ago from Google, um, the technical dead of machine learning, talking about the glue code. And um, this is what TensorFlow Extended solves, is providing us the glue code between those different services. It also provides us the libraries, uh, which uh, we can use for um, the data uh, um, the data validation or the data transforming or model val validation and things like this. But it also provides us the glue code. And the, um, um, to run those components effectively, we use Apache Beam under the hood. And to potentially also string them together or to orchestrate those components, we can use Apache Beam, as you will see later. Um, so what are the current challenges in the machine learning ops world? So first of all, there's a very strong focus on reproducibility. So if we train a machine learning model, in a couple months' time, we want to go back and reproduce the exact mach machine learning model to get to the same predictions. We also want to scale this, and I think that's where Apache Beam really shines um, together with TensorFlow Extended. We can just install certain components, use it out of the box with Apache Beam's direct runner, and everything works. If we run into um, scaling problems, we can then, for example, um, change the executor um, or the, the runner behind um, Apache Beam and use Dataflow or Apache Flink or Apache Spark, for example. And then all the work we do um, with TensorFlow Extended and Apache Beam, the focus is on reducing the burden for the data scientists. So currently, they spend a lot of time figuring out um, how can we build the most effective models? How can we um, sort of like solve a business problem? But then when it comes, when the model is out in the real world, the data scientists will still have to maintain those machine learning models um, manually. And that's something we want um, to avoid going forward. And the combination between TensorFlow Extended and Apache Beam, that seems to be the dream team in my opinion. So for the next couple of seconds, let's talk about a TensorFlow Extended here. Um, since you all know Apache Beam, I don't, doesn't need an introduction here. But when we talk about a machine learning life cycle, a model life cycle, everything starts with the data, as you can see in the upper left corner. And if we do the data validation, we make sure that our data sets have not drifted away in a certain direction, um, maybe away from the original model and how we trained the model. We do our feature engineering during the, during the pre-processing. We train a model. Sometimes we even tune them. And then we analyze the model, validate it, and deploy. And once the model is out in the real world, we capture the feedback. We capture basically what was inferred, um, how, is, how the predictions have developed. And then we push this back, this additional data, back into our life cycle and the start, and the life cycle starts over. And this is basically a continuous uh, life cycle and we can continuously update our machine learning models. And because as you can see, this, this can happen as many times as we want to, the automation is key. And again, that's something we can do with the Dream Team here, Apache Beam and TensorFlow Extended. Another key point here is to stress that the components are highly entangled. What that means is when we, for example, are in the software development world, um, we have our CI CD systems, we download code, um, we build, all, we get all the dependencies, 
we compile the code and then we push the artifacts out into the real world. That's a pretty linear process. But here in the, in the machine learning life cycles, for example, we do the data validation, that data validation generates a data schema and we're gonna reuse the data schema in downstream components, maybe during the data pre-processing, maybe during the training, maybe during the data, uh, the model uh, validation. Um, so there's a lot of like, we can skip those steps. So the, the way we do that is um, those components com can communicate through uh, the metadata store or uh, metadata in general. And that is something what TensorFlow Extended helps us to standardize as well. So that's why I would say TensorFlow Extended is here to help. It makes the, the setup of machine learning pipelines really easy and straightforward. How does it look like in the real world? So we have our blue boxes. Um, those are our machine learning components. So we have, for example, the data ingestion, the data validation, as I mentioned, all the way through the, the model deployment. But then we orchestrate those components um, on pipeline platforms. And the pipeline pl platform could be Apache Beam, Apache Airflow, or Kubeflow pipelines. Um, and then in parallel, they, those components, the blue boxes, they communicate with the metadata store. They basically, every time the component starts, it looks up the re relevant artifacts from the metadata store. And when the execution of that component is uh, completed, then it pushes the results back into the, into the metadata store. The TensorFlow Extended project is, is a, quite a compilation, a wonderful portfolio of different libraries and tools. So and everything started with the libraries provided in the orange boxes on the bottom of that um, overview. And so um, the project started off uh, with TensorFlow Serving. Um, that was probably the, the biggest real world problem of how to get the machine learning out in the real world. Um, then the project provided uh, TensorFlow data validation as a separate library. And then we talked about ten TensorFlow transform model, uh, model analysis and so on. Um, in the meantime, um, or last year, spring 2019, um, Google open sourced the glue code between those components and that became TensorFlow extended. So all of a sudden we were able to define those components in, in, in Python code, as you will see here in a second. And then, um, we can go through those components step by step and execute them in a very orchestrated way. So now let's meet Apache Beam. You probably have seen um, the graphic on the right side uh, a million times. So basically we have the different uh, languages where we can express our Apache Beam pipelines and, and P collections and uh, transformations. Um, we can then construct them and convert them to our runner platform, whether it's Apache Flink, Spark, uh, Dataflow, and so on. And so in TensorFlow, we use it in two ways, or we can use it in two ways. First of all, we have components which are very data heavy. And so Apache Beam, um, the application of Apache Beam is a perfect use case in those components. One of them, as I will show you in a second here, is uh, TensorFlow data validation. Um, if you have no cluster configured, it, everything runs out of the box on the direct runner. So that's a really good, easy um, setup for folks who want to get started with TensorFlow Extended. Um, if uh, you want to sort of like scale your operations, then you can either push those data, data loads to a GCP uh, Dataflow or push it to your Apache Flink or Spark cluster. As I mentioned also, the orchestration of the different components. Um, as I said earlier, you can do this with Apache Beam, Airflow, and Kubeflow pipelines. There's also an interactive context node where you can basically walk through them, walk through the execution of the components yourself, and then you basically, you as a human, um, you are the orchestrator and the operator of the pipeline. So how does Apache or Apache Beam with TensorFlow Extended look in action? Here's a quick example. So first of all, we need to ingest our data. Uh, we can quickly just um, define um, splits, for example. Let's say here we want to load a data set. Um, and then during the ingestion, we want to split the data set into a training and a validation data set. And our split we define here as three to one. Um, then we can provide the path to a component here. In this case, we load TF records. Um, we can load CSV files. We can load other data structures out of the box. If there's something um, you need to sort of like customize a little bit, you can also write custom um, components. And on Thursday, we'll have a workshop on how to write 
uh, custom ingestion components with Apache Beam and TensorFlow Extended, but more about that later. Once the data is ingested, you can then start to validate it. And I think that's a wonderful moment when TFX and Beam really shines. Um, because with these two lines here, um, we can basically generate the statistics of that data set we just loaded. Um, behind the scenes, it will use Apache Beam to generate all the statistics distributedly. And then we can also generate this, um, the schema of the data set, which is another wonderful use case. And we will see um, that it has downstream uh, wonderful use cases in terms of how we can how, how we can use the data schema. As an output, we can then generate those statistics. And um, this tool has been really helpful in my machine learning work uh, where I can investigate data sets really quickly and check them against each other. You can also check different data sets against, against each other. You can see the differences between data sets. You can uh, um, check the, uh, the, the splits between um, yeah, the evaluation and the training set, make sure that the distributions are equal. Um, and it's a wonderful visualization. Um, but in the interest of time, since we only have 20 minutes here, um, I want to skip the other steps. We'll walk through an example on Thursday in the workshop. But you have also components for the feature engineering, model training, tuning, analysis, and also the deployment. So then when we put this together, we have the last step. We need to orchestrate our um, different components. So right now, until now, we have defined our components, but we need to execute them. And one way we can execute them is through Apache Beam. So first of all, um, we can define this entire pipeline and Apache Beam, the setup with Apache Beam is recommended for like a minimal setup. If you would use a different tool like for pipelines, there's a lot of UI involved. But Apache Beam is um, really good if you have like a, a terminal machine and you want to run your pipelines there. Um, there's no um, way to access this through um, like a UI interface or if you want to debug your pipelines easily. Um, you can quickly define your entire orchestration pipelines. The component, the component objects we defined earlier in Python, uh, we can turn them into a list. We can then uh, configure our uh, metadata store. This is basically, in this case, we're just um, pointing towards a pass of an SQLite database. Um, for real-world production environments, I would highly recommend to use um, uh, MySQL. And then we set our Apache Beam arguments, in this case, um, we set the number of workers, um, whether we want to use all cores and the direct runner or not. Um, this could also include all of the, the configuration details for um, external Spark clusters or uh, the connections to uh, Dataflow. And then we can define our pipeline. And here in this moment, we basically pass all the arguments to the pipeline and we say, try to cache as, ma as many components as you can. I think this is a great thing for, uh, speaking for TFX as well, that we can um, cache intermediate steps. And in case something happened to the pipeline, we don't have to recompute those components when we restart the pipeline. And then at the end, we basically execute that pipeline. And what that means in the case of a, um, Apache Beam is that pipeline will then immediately be executed with the arguments we provided. And you would basically see um, output like this. this is much longer. We would also see the output for every component afterwards. And it basically, this shows um, the graph as text, which components are based on or depend on other components. And then um, we start with the first component in the execution. What powers this behind the scenes is basically the metadata. And I, I want you to take one thing away from that from the talk is that metadata changes everything. Um, and that, that is what makes TensorFlow extended so wonderful for machine learning engineers that we don't have to worry about the metadata. They are all, those interactions with the metadata store are defined within the components. We talk about how components works in detail in the workshop on Thursday. So if you're interested, feel free to join us. Um, so then a lot of folks ask the questions like, hey, right now I retrain my models. I have a notebook or I have a Python script um, or we have batch scripts. Why do we need machine learning pipelines in such an um, abstracted way like we do this through TensorFlow Extend and, and Apache Beam? Well, first of all, as I said, like you don't have to worry about the metadata. It generates a lot of metadata for you, which you then can use for audit trails, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, it gives you the optimization to customize a lot of components. So for example, we can put humans in the loop, we can do um, branching of pipelines, we can generate TF-like models and T uh, TensorFlow.js models in the same, or at the same time. And then we can build workflows where we can do continuous model deployments. And the wonderful thing is that it's highly abstracted in terms of um, the actual implementation. So we can just focus on the components, as you saw, it's very few lines to actually configure those components and then the execution behind, happens behind the scenes. So since we're rushed through an implementation here, um, this is uh, the reference to our uh, book, which um, I co-authored together with Catherine Nelson. And we have a lot of uh, Google Cloud and AWS ex examples inside of the book. And it also it contains um, a brief introduction to Apache Beam, and then we showcase some examples of like how to configure your Apache Beam pipelines for the orchestration. Um, quick shout out to uh, some wonderful talks uh, in this, at this conference here. There is um, a talk uh, on Wednesday by Robert Crow and Reza um, Rockney. Um, both are developer advocates at Google, and they talk about um, again the implementation of TFX and Apache Beam. And I'm really looking forward to this talk. And if you want to learn more about the details about how TFX components work behind the scenes and how you can use your Apache Beam skills to gen to build TensorFlow uh, extended um, custom components, um, join us in the talk uh, in the workshop on Thursday afternoon. With that, um, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions. So the, the question is: the boundary uh, between Airflow and Kubeflow is a bit blurred. Uh, for data engineering, Airflow seems to be the right platform for scheduling and managing pipelines, whereas for machine learning pipelines, Kubeflow seems to be better. What's your opinion on this? Um, that's Whatever I say here is very subjective, so take this with a grain of salt. Um, I think the integration with Apache Airflow is great. Um, it allows you to orchestrate your pipelines as well. Um, so if you, if you have um, ETL processes already running and you have um, Airflow already set up, it's it is great to orchestrate your pipelines. If you start from scratch, um, Kubeflow Pipelines has a few advantages because it was basically built, as you said, um, with the purpose of machine learning uh, pipelines. So for example, you have the UI for um, looking up your model lineage um, directly in Kubeflow Pipelines. It's something you can't do automatically in Apache Beam. There's another question when using the uh, Apache uh, Beam DAG runner, uh, you can use the multiprocessing and multi-threading modes on direct runner to parallelize execution of the pipelines, aka uh, the nodes can be executed in parallel, execute uh, in or execute in parallel. From multi-threading versus multi-processing, what are the differences? Uh, what would you recommend to use for the local orchestration of TFX pipelines? Um, then, um, that's a that's a really good question. I think I don't want to. I will answer this question in this in the Slack channel. I will look something up and um, don't want to um, speculate here. Um, give me a couple seconds and I'll get back to you on that in the Slack channel. All right. Well, Hannes, thank you so much for for the presentation. And right, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you.